The engine I have in my boat is a young mark, it's a two cylinder diesel engine. Very nice, reliable, nice little engine. I make a single cylinder and I make a two cylinder and I believe they make a three cylinder. And they're all very neat and very reliable. And as they get older they can be problematic and a lot of people are having troubles with in starting them. Um, this is usually electrical problems and if you look on YouTube or chat rooms, forums and everything else you'll see all sorts of various ways people have tried to come over the starting issues. And it's usually down to a voltage drop because of bad connections. And you'll get people, they'll double up on cable capacity or they'll put in relays and some even advocate putting a, a solenoid to switch the solenoid which is a crazy way of doing it as far as I'm concerned. The problem is the corrosion and bad connections so sort them out and that's the proper way to do it in my view. So having sorted out all your battery connections and all the other electrical things uh, such as good earths and so forth, um, you start looking elsewhere and these little engines have a 30 amp fuse and there's a picture of it here that I've arrowed which, show, which clearly shows this fuse. But on some of the older ones, believe it or not, this is actually in the loom as pictured here. And it may even be taped over or a heat shrink, shrink over it and it's all sprayed the same colour as the engine so no wonder people can't find it. But that little fuse holder can get very uh, iffy and corroded and a few ohms here and a few ohms there, we're only dealing with 12 volts don't forget, really reduces the cranking amperage of turning the engine over. So you, I don't care how good your latest flute meter is or what latest digital measuring device you've got, it will not show you problems under load and under working conditions. And something you perhaps should be aware of and can give a lot of trouble, some people dismiss it, but is the actual battery isolator switch. These are very, very common and your meter won't show you any difference and I'll prove it to you. You stay with me, I'll physically prove it to you. This is the second battery isolator switch I've taken out of my boat. Very, very common. They often give problems and they're not really suitable for a marine use. The key pushes a spring which pushes a nickel coated bar across these copper studs or bolts completing the circuit. There's a small spring in the bottom that when the key is taken out is pushed away isolating the battery. Now you can use anything you like that's going to continuity. I'll try to do this one handed so please bear with me. The uh, circuit is complete, less than two ohms according to this meter. You take the key out and it isolates the battery. So you assume that this is okay because you've checked it out. But uh, you haven't, as I've just said before. Um, these can be a lot of problems and people just ignore them. A little bit of birdie grease around there should have notified you of something. Anyway, I've drilled out the rivets that hold this together, look, just to speed the video along and just put a nut and bolt in to hold it. And um, I knew what I was going to find long before I drilled this out because I've come across it so, so many times before. If we take that apart, if I don't drop anything, try to. Come on. There, there's our. Well, in this case, it's a copper bar, but can you see the colour of this end? To that end? If I turn it over. You see the corrosion there that makes you that one? And that, although it read on the meter all right, that's where your losses are coming. That's where your cranking amperage is disappearing to. 
An home here, two homes here, and home there, home somewhere else. Don't forget, we're only dealing with 12 volts. The only way that you can, I mean, some people check out these forget meters, they'll put a big screwdriver across there. Not a good idea because you'll only spark the, uh, the threads and spoil that if it is good. Simplest way is to take the lead off one side, put it over the other side and tighten it up. And after the engine cranks over perfectly okay, you can say, well, there's your fault. But I've come across this so many times, so many times. So, uh, I hope you found that interesting. So have we got one of these? Have it suspect. Don't try and repair them. Don't try and do anything with them. It's a fool's errand. Come buy another one. The best one you can buy.